You probably know I hate talking about valuation first because if that's where you start in our experience, it often leads to big mistakes made for many investors. So what's the point here? Want to invest in chiplets, 3D architecture, advanced packaging, RISC-V chips, and pretty much every other major chip development out there? Hey y'all, welcome back to Chipstock Investor. Today we are talking about Synopsys. Synopsys has been one of our favorite semiconductor companies over the years, and this company has not disappointed this year. It's been up 70% year to date in the market. This quarter is the beginning of some change for Synopsys. CEO and co-founder Art DeGoose is going to be retiring. He announced his retirement earlier this year, and this earnings call was the last as CEO. Art DeGoose founded the company in 1986 and has been a part of Synopsys for the entire time. It's a very well-run company. We are very sad to see him go, but we hope he enjoys his retirement. So let's talk about the Q4 fiscal 2023 earnings report from Synopsys. Yeah, let's talk about it. Casey, Synopsys fiscal year ended in October. So this was Q4 2023. And all of the talk this year has been about, of course, generative AI. And Synopsys has been using AI as part of its software suite for quite some time. Released some generative AI tools this year. But I think we forget sometimes that this was actually a down year for the semiconductor market. Pretty ugly out there, especially for the PC and smartphone market. In recent months, we've seen some weakness crop up in industrial and automotive chips. And through it all, Synopsys has just continued to hum along at that low to mid-teens percentage growth rate. So for the full year fiscal 2023, revenue grew 15% to $5.84 billion, and their backlog in the quarter actually increased another $1.5 billion for a total of $8.6 billion. So this company has plenty of orders to last through the next year and beyond. Casey, as we started talking about Synopsys a year ago as one of our top picks in the semiconductor market, part of our investment thesis was not only would we get steady revenue increases over time, but also profit margin expansion. And sure enough, that's what happened this year. And along the way, they were purchased plenty of stock. Art de Goose outlined really the last five-year run that they've been on. Five-year CAGR of 13% revenue growth, adjusted operating margin increased by 13 points, and adjusted earnings per share growing at 23%. That's absolutely incredible. Let's take a look at your semiconductor industry flowchart because I, I think this is important to just review what this company does exactly and how critical it is, not just to the semiconductor world, but the whole economy. There at the top, you can see electronic design automation or EDA, as well as IP, both Synopsys and its peer Cadence, as well as Mentor, which is now owned by German industrial conglomerate Siemens, make up this oligopoly of EDA software. Back in the day, the big key to these companies' success was getting the semiconductor design market away from just basic CAD and to this more automated functionality because there are countless microscopic features on chips and it's just impossible for even a whole design team to manually design the modern semiconductor. And so you look at this and this is where the software part of the IT world flows back into the semiconductor market and helps fuel the next generation of more powerful chips. So you can think of Synopsys, the leader in EDA, as like the gears of innovation for computing technology, for semiconductors, for really at this point, the entire economy. Before continuing, let me remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if this video is helpful as you do your own investment research and increase your knowledge of business and technology. We really appreciate the support as subscribing to the channel helps us continue putting out content like this. Let's take a look at the revenue breakdown for Q4 2023 for Synopsys. You can see that EDA makes up the majority of their portfolio. EDA at 58%, design IP 32%, software integrity 8.2%, and then there's that very small portion, just over 1% for the catch-all for everything else. And specifically on that design IP, 
if we back up to the semiconductor flowchart, you've got both of them circled here, both EDA and IP at the type, top of the chart. Oftentimes, investors talk about semiconductor intellectual property, IP, and licensing revenue in the light of ARM holding, a company that had the IPO earlier this year, key to all sorts of companies designing their own chips, including Apple. But Synopsys and Cadence Design also top businesses. They own lots of semiconductor patents, license those patents out to their customers. And of course, when those customers purchase the license to use those chips, of course, it comes with an EDA software package to help design them into what they need them for specifically. So top companies here at the top of the funnel, you can say for the semiconductor market. Synopsis also has a squeaky clean balance sheet, cash and short-term investments of $1.59 billion and only $18 million in debt, so basically no debt for this company. And we really like the cleaner balance sheet and margin expansion potential of Synapsis versus its competitor, Cadence. Let's mention the secular growth trend for just a moment before we continue with the earnings take. Back in 2015, Art de Goose and Synopsis actually forecasted that sometime this decade, the semiconductor industry was going to hit $1 trillion in annual sales. We're on pace to reach about 510 to 520 billion in semiconductor sales for 2023. A long ways to go, but you've been probably hearing this take for a while now within the semiconductor industry and outside of it from analysts and from customers that, of course, semiconductors are becoming increasingly more important. And it does appear they are, in fact, headed towards that one trillion mark by the year 2030. So in about seven more years, if it does hit the $1 trillion mark, that would be an exceptionally good compound annual growth rate of about 9 to 10%, closer to 10% for the semiconductor market. That is fantastic. Now, I mentioned that because EDA, electronic design automation, tends to grow a bit faster than the market, owing to the fact that chip design, semiconductor design, and now these big giant AI systems housed in data centers are getting increasingly complex. So all of that EDA software and all of the add-ons that Synopsys packages with it tends to grow a bit faster than the market. So we think something like a 13% revenue kager for Synopsys over the next seven years, just like they did over the last five, is really within the scope of possibilities here. And we can see that at the midpoint of 2024 guidance, revenue expected to be about 14% to $6.6 billion. So part of our thesis outlined late last year, again, it's not the fastest growing software stock, but steady revenue growth and profit margin expansion along the way. So Sassine Ghazi, who will become the CEO on January 1st, said that the fiscal 2024 outlook is for 31.5% adjusted net margin compared to 29.7 in fiscal 2023. Now, we have pointed out that one of the main differences between Synapsis and Cadence is the software integrity and security business for Synapsis. Cadence is taking its EDA platform in the direction more of molecular design, but there are some other differences as well, and one key is in the IP. What is one of those differences, Nick? Yeah, folks, so whenever you see IP thrown around. Just remember, this is simply something that's been patented. It's owned by the company that has laid claim to that IP. And so, of course, that being said, there's going to be significant differences between Synopsis and Cadence by virtue of those IP portfolios. But one key piece of IP that is popping up in the world of AI right now is HBM, high bandwidth memory. You've probably seen that new NVIDIA AI chip, the H200, powering its new AI systems. And it is the first to feature HBM3E, the latest type of high bandwidth memory embedded right there in that GPU. It's not just more memory, but also feeding that GPU with more memory at a faster rate to help power bigger and more efficient AI systems. And Synopsys owns a significant portfolio of HBM IP. So they are a licensor to all sorts of companies that design and manufacture these memory chips. SK Hynix looks like is the HBM 3E partner of NVIDIA, but as well as Samsung and Micron and everybody else in this market as well. So there are some big differences between Synopsys and its peer cadence because of these IP portfolios. 
let's circle back to that software integrity business that Synopsys has. That portion of the business delivered over 500 million in the last 12 months revenue. And they do own some security IP that Cadence does not have. As we mentioned, Cadence is going into that molecular sciences, life sciences. And so this is a massive lever that Synopsys can pull in increasing profit margins over the next five to 10 years as the software business legs behind the core EDA part of the business. One other point on this, the software integrity and security portion of the business is currently at mid-teens operating margin versus the EDA per portion of the business, which is in the 38% range. Obviously, there can be a huge amount of growth in just this portion of the business for Synopsys. That's right. Huge part of our investment thesis here, just shy of 10% part of the business, but huge potential to expand cash generation from that smaller piece of the pie. Well, let's go back now all the way to the top. Let's go to the core EDA part of the business and dig a little bit deeper into what's going on in AI. So it was actually back in 2020 that Synopsys announced this DSO.AI an AI-assisted chip design portion of the business. And that's still pretty new. They're actually still rolling those tools out to many of their customers. But just a few short years later, they've now released this generative AI tool in collaboration with Microsoft. It's called Synopsys.ai. Pretty simple product description here. But it's a collaborative tool, of course, using conversational AI to help design teams speed up the process of designing these chips. Some interesting things talked about here regarding both of these products, the DSO.ai from a few years ago, and now this new Synopsys.ai tool. Ghazi said during the Q&A session in particular that they're still very early on in when they're renewing licenses with customers. These tend to be multi-year contracts. Many of them are now, for the first time, taking a look at these AI tools. And when they sign up on a new contract, Ghazi said there's about a 20% contract over contract growth when a customer is renewing their EDA agreement and asking for the AI capability to be added. So the point here, AI still very early on in the synopsis story, and it looks like it's fueling some significant growth for the business as they get those customers on board with the new tools to help speed up the design process, which is incredibly important given the relentlessly increasingly complex design involved of these semiconductors. So what's the point here? Want to invest in chiplets, 3D architecture, advanced packaging, RISC-V chips, and pretty much every other major chip development out there? you have to invest in a company like Synopsys. Synopsys, as well as the smaller pure cadence, is absolutely foundational to the semiconductor market and thus the economy as a whole. That's a really good reason that investors have picked up on since we started talking about it about a year ago, and it still holds true today. However, with both of these companies that we've talked about in the past, there is one big risk, and that is valuation. Nick, tell us about the valuation for Synopsys. You probably know I hate talking about valuation first because if that's where you start in our experience, it often leads to big mistakes made for many investors. For example, if you start with the valuation and you think it's high, that colors everything else you read about the business. And oftentimes that means many investors just simply don't begin buying early enough firing up some sort of dollar cost average plan or buying in batches. They wait until later, hoping that there's going to be a pullback. There never is one. And then later when the stock price is much higher, they get FOMO and end up overpaying at some sort of cyclical peak for the business or for the market. So that's why we always end with valuation last. Anyways, synopsis and cadence. Incredible valuation, multiple expansion in the last year. Like you just said, investors have really picked up on these stories surrounding AI and foundation for everything else going on out there. So about a year ago, Synopsys and Cadence traded for about 35 to 40 times trailing 12-month free cash flow. Fast forward to today, it's 50 to 60. Cadence, uh, a bit higher valuation, it 
closer to 60 times, trailing 12 month free cash flow. Synopsis currently closer to 50. At any rate, that's a risk. And especially, you know, it looks like it's going to be a good year for Synopsis. They're expecting growth, profit margin expansion again. And we are coming off of a pretty rough year for semis in 2022 and 2023. That said, Synopsis itself called out some risks to its China business in the next year due to some of those ongoing trade restrictions from the U.S. Even so, I think 14% initial revenue growth guidance, pretty good. We expect lots of stock buybacks and over the, the long term, expanding cash generation margin over the long term. Another risk here, though, to that is those cash flow margins in particular might take a step back in 2024 because of some increases in cash taxes synopsis will have to pay about a 600 million cash tax payment coming in 2024 nevertheless the long-term trend is still there but that is another risk china and maybe some increases in cash taxes that might reduce some of the cash flows all of this being said this doesn't change our original investing thesis this company we expect to have mid-teens revenue growth, expanding profit margins, and ongoing stock buybacks. And all of this will generally equate to around a 20% earnings per share growth. But as Nick said, the valuation is no joke. So as we've been saying, using a DCA dollar cost averaging plan to buy this stock in batches is probably going to be the best bet if you're interested in investing in this company synopsis. Don't be afraid to build a position in this company over the course of years, especially if you think synopsis and cadence will continue to be foundational for the indefinite future. That's a wrap for this top AI stock synopsis, epic 2023 for the company, and looks like it's going to be at least an equally good 2024. Let's do a preview for next week. As you may know, we have delayed our latest cybersecurity episode. That's coming next week. After we get to Marvell Technology Group, we'll also be talking about digital payments infrastructure. And to round out the week, we are working on an updated video explaining the semiconductor industry flowchart. We hope that is a good explainer for you to kick off 2024 and help you understand how all of the companies in the semiconductor industry actually make money. Until then, everyone, thanks for watching Chipstock Investor. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. It helps us out a lot. And if you appreciate what we're doing, we appreciate it if you share our videos with your friends and fellow investors. Thanks so much. See you next week, everyone.